So good morning. It is a snowy morning, Monday morning here. Sometimes uh, or some places it's not that, but that's what we got here. Um, I want to talk about you know the all the pictures I've been seeing people posting on social media and how everybody's getting outside and it's so nice to see that love. Doesn't matter how cold it is, we get outside and we're enjoying nature. And I want to come back to this concept that we are not separate from nature. We are nature. We are part of the natural world. And I think that's why we feel sometimes feel so at home when we're outside. And if we can get out all year round, it's wonderful because I think we can we can find that connection to to um, how we fit into the whole bigger picture. So today I want to focus on going inward and connecting to our inner landscape so that we do what the trees do and what everything around us does in nature, um, they have themselves to connect with and first and foremost. So uh, that's what we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna have you lay down on some blankets. Morning, Lisa. And I'll show you the setup here. So I've taken my two blankets. If you don't have blankets like this, you know, look around your house and see what you've got. So one goes like this, folds in half, and then the other one goes like this and folds in half. The bottom one is gonna be lengthwise with your mat. And the other one is gonna go across. So watch as I lay in it because it's not what we typically do. Typically, I will have you sit right up against it, but I'm not. I'm going to have you sit away from it because I want the bottom of the shoulder blades and the shoulder blades themselves to sit on the edge. So you have to move your arms around to get a sense of where your shoulder blades are. And then you pull in your blanket, your other blanket, right up to your shoulders, maybe even a little under if you need that shoulder support. Otherwise, your shoulders are going to drop down into the space between the two blankets towards the floor. We're gonna keep legs bent so that we can have a softness through the front of the hip joint. That's right here. And you can put your hands here and see, are these muscles relaxing? And you can test to see what they feel like when they're engaged by lifting a leg up. And then when you put it back down, it should be softness right in here. So the idea of supporting behind the shoulder blades is so that we can do a little bit of an elevation of the chest. We can lengthwise expand through the front of the thoracic spine. So that's the this part of the spine that's joined to your ribs. And I'm going to focus on this area today and, and what's inside this space. The other thing that, that this gives us is a widening a broadening through the center of the chest. Then you can have your hands on your body. They can be on your belly. They can be on your front ribs or they can be out to the sides. And you can decide, do you need to lift up your pelvis and lengthen your low back a little bit here? I want you to find the center of your pelvis. So the back of the pelvis is where your spine, the part of the spine that sits in between the two sides of the pelvis, hi Sawyer, is your sacrum. And that's what you're resting on. You're resting on the sacrum and the two sides of the pelvis. So notice if your low back is sinking into the floor or the opposite, if you're overly arching and your front ribs, the lower front ribs are lifting and widening. I'd like that part of the rib cage to be quiet and more this lift from the center, from the center of the breastbone. And then if you're comfortable with closing your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. If you're not, just keep your eyes a little bit soft. So maybe a half gaze, eyes half, kind of eyelids halfway down and, and gaze at something that's not moving that your, your mind won't keep continuing to identify things and label. And then take a moment to unhinge your jaw, wiggle it around. And I want to say that, you know, at any time in the practice, something doesn't feel comfortable for you, if something doesn't feel right, or it makes you um, anxious, or, you know, affects you emotionally, you feel free to change to walk out of the room and come back. 
Get out of the pose completely if you need to. So while we're resting in this position, settling in and make little minor adjustments, whatever you need, it's gonna feel intrusive possibly because we don't often lay this way with something pushing into our upper backs. But I'd like you while you're lying here, and again, this is optional because if it causes a, a, a trigger of anxiety, then you don't have to do it. You can just focus on the center of your chest. But if you're okay with focusing on your breathing, just notice how you're breathing in and breathing out. Doesn't have to be in your chest, just notice what's happening naturally if you can. And if this feels too high, you know you can come out at any time. What I'm feeling, I'll tell you what I'm feeling, is my belly is expanding first. Not because I'm forcing it to or lifting it up, it's just happening. And then I can feel my ribs kind of widening at the front. And I feel a lift through the top of my chest just below my collarbones. So that's my story. So what's your story? What can you feel? So this is us moving from the outside towards the inside. We're noticing what's happening on the outside of the body. And that's often the way we move in our yoga practices is from the outside. That's the instruction that I give you. It's the tools we have to move your arm, move your leg. I wanna go in a little bit deeper to a, a less tangible place. And I want you to come to a, a, a spot behind your breastbone. You have to use your awareness here and your imagination. So a spot in the center of your chest behind your breastbone. And imagine that there is a light here. And it can be like a candlelight. It can be like a Christmas light. It can be like a, a sparkler. It can be whatever you want it to be. And as we breathe, imagine that when you breathe in, the light gets brighter, like the, the um, power was just turned up and it's gotten brighter. And then as you breathe out, it doesn't dim, it stays bright, but it starts to expand through your body. It starts to spread in all directions. And I don't just mean down through your legs and up to your head. I mean, forward to the front of the body, out to the sides of the body and the back of the body. So just spend a moment or two with that. Inhale and the light gets brighter. Exhale and it expands and spreads. I know it's difficult when, sometimes difficult when I ask you to observe your breath, it's difficult to just let it be and watch it. Boy, I, I acknowledge that. At any time you can let it go. So imagining this, this network of light that is traveling through your body that's coming from the very center. I'm gonna say your heart center, or your heart space. It's not the physical beating heart, although it does provide light to it and life. Just another moment or two And 
And let's spend in the last moment, let's spend time equalizing the breath, the in-breath and the out-breath, making them even. Not necessarily a deeper or longer breath unless you want to. Noticing what happens when you change the breath on purpose. What happens to that light? And then come back to a natural rhythm. If the light imagery continues to work for you, you can keep it. Otherwise, you can let it go. Then walk your feet just a little bit closer to you. Still parallel. I'm, I'm going to say mine are about hip distance apart. And let's go into opening your knees away from each other rolling towards the outer edge of your feet and then lifting them back up and even rolling towards the inner edges of your feet. Just feel the shift. It's a little bit of movement and an awareness of the light, if that's possible. And how, because we're focusing on movement in the pelvis, can you imagine that the light has, has been drawn down to the center of the pelvic bowl? And it's staying here, still staying bright. But now as you, each time you exhale, it spreads out from this place. And we're keeping pelvis pretty stable here. We're moving thigh bones in the hip sockets. You can adjust you where your feet are at any time. It's subtle movement and it requires a little bit of core engagement. I'm gonna change it up just slightly, come back to neutral in the middle and take them left and right. So same idea, keeping pelvis steady and stable. So that light stays there and your legs move around the light in the center of the pelvis. And pelvis doesn't shift from left to right. So notice if your ribs are moving, your waist is moving. I'm asking you to be quieter there and just connect with the movement of your thigh bones in your hip sockets. Can you? notice that. One of the things that I'll, I'll invite you to pay attention to is, are you shifting your weight on the back of your pelvis? Do you shift over to one buttock? Let this, this central point in the center of the pelvis be your guiding light. This guiding light that exists within everything absolutely everything. Okay, last time, subtle, subtle movement. Come back into the center. And I'm gonna ask you to roll off to the side off of your supports, then just move them out of the way and then come back. If you still need um, something under your head, you can put a blanket under your head if you have more of a rounded upper back. But if not, and you can lie here with connection, the connection points to the earth, or your, the back of your head, your upper back, the back of your pelvis and your feet, maybe your arms too. And then imagine that ball still of light in the center of the pelvis. And just for the next few moments, imagine it's, it's getting very heavy. It's still light in, in, because it's a light, but it's like a, the weight of a metal ball. And I'd like you to roll that light around your pelvis. Just keeping your pelvis on the ground. So pelvis is moving now. 
thigh bones in the hip sockets are moving just with the movement of the pelvis, just for stabilizing. Go both directions and imagine that, that this light is kind of rolling and coating the whole inside of the pelvis. So you're moving from this place. Both directions, switch it up so you're, you're not only going the way that's easiest. And notice how that affects your rib cage, changing the re rib relationship between your rib cage and your pelvis. And then come back into the middle and let this light that's heavy now roll into your low back. Let your low back move towards the floor and then roll it back to the center. And then do that a few times. It rolls into your lumbar. So your lumbar, your low back moves into the floor, your belly kind of hollows out and then you move back. So I invite you to find breath that works with this movement. I'm gonna suggest what I find works is an exhale when the ball moves towards my low back and an inhale when it moves back to the center of my pelvis. Okay, one more time like that. Feet in a good spot to leverage because now the ball moves towards the lumbar and then lightly press into your feet and notice how your legs engage because the next step is to lift your pelvis off the floor, but just let it hover. Just barely a piece of paper could slide underneath and hold it there just so you can see what's happening, what muscles are working. And then land your pelvis back down, let the ball roll back into the center of the pelvis and then do it again. And now each time when you go to hover, lift one more vertebra away from the floor and then come back, connecting with this inner landscape. What's happening to the ball when you start to lift higher and higher? So each time the ball rolls through the lumbar and each time you lift one more vertebra off the ground, Subtlety is the name of this game here. Again, find the breath that works best for you. I'm gonna travel up the length of the spine. Notice if you're holding your breath. As you go back down, you're rolling back down your spine in order. Just think of this, this ball, it's heavy, but it's also filled with light. Notice where it's the most difficult and where it's the easiest in your spine to move. So I'm almost at the top. I'm just about, I'm coming up to my shoulder blades. So you have five lumbar vertebra, you have 12 thoracic vertebra. So that's theoretically, that's the number of times that we're gonna go up. <laughs> and you have seven cervical vertebra. We're not really gonna go through the neck spine. Okay, let's just say we're very close. Take it all the way up to wherever you can go, letting your shoulders roll back. Shoulders roll closer to the floor and then roll back down. Okay, and stretch out your legs, stretch out your arms. Take a breath in. That was a lot of work for the backs of the legs. At least I feel like it was. So now come, bend your legs again, lift your right leg up, interlace your hands behind your leg. Your leg does not have to be straight. And if you find your arms are too short to get where your leg needs to be, take a strap. 
So what I'm asking you to do as well is be on the back of your pelvis, not in your low back. So here's me on my pelvis. Here's me in my low back. On the back of the pelvis. So take your strap if you need to. And do a few sun leg salutations here, opening and closing your knee, lengthening the back of the legs. Imagine that the light is traveling from the center of the pelvis right out through your legs. Imagine your leg is like this hollow leg full of light. One more time and then we'll hold. And as you hold, it's wherever you feel the, the first sign of resistance in the back of the leg. And I'm pressing my thigh into my hands. So I'm moving my thigh that way as I hold it. If your leg is vertical, you're pressing your thigh into your hands, but you're also bringing your shin towards your face. So two actions in one leg. Just hold it, reach up towards the ceiling and also root your hip back down into the floor. So wherever you happen to be, it's your point of resistance. And then let go, slowly lower your leg, take some time here. Imagine the ball is sitting heavy in the center of the pelvis, weighting your pelvis down as you slowly lower this leg down. So a little bit of core activation here. When it lands, pause for a moment and then slide it back in, other side. So a little open and close. You're taking it through your range of motion while keeping the back of your pelvis on the ground. Telling your hamstrings what you want them to do, shorten and lengthen. And we'll do one more. So pelvis is level. Press your thigh into your hand. So you're pushing your thigh away from you wherever you happen to be to stay balanced on the back of the pelvis. If your leg is vertical and straight, you're pressing your thigh into your hands towards the end of the mat, but you're bringing your shin towards you. It doesn't really work if your leg's not straight. And you're also rooting down to the earth and lifting up to the sky. Picture the light. No part of your body is is lacking light. So do you feel as if you're compromising anywhere? And then let go of your hands, slowly lower your leg down. Heaviness in the pelvis, almost as if, you know, like if it was a trampoline and the ball fell into the center of the trampoline, the end points would come towards each other. So your hip points draw towards each other to maintain the stability of the pelvis. And then you land, pause for a moment, keep reaching out through that leg. And then re-bend, we'll roll to the side and now come onto your hands and knees. We'll do a little bit of table work. You can put a blanket under your knees if you need to. Good morning again. Set up your hands so that you're not gonna have pain in them. And you feel an evenness and a balance from left to right, from front to back, from your fingertips to the palm of your hand. And then spend some time here dropping your tailbone. So, so first come back to this idea of the light. The light's inside and imagine it is rolling now and it's just gonna hang off the tip of your tailbone. Let it just hang there for a moment. And then let it start to roll up from your tailbone through the inside of your body, through your lumbar, your middle back, and let it sink right between your shoulder blades where the shoulder blades are. So it's moving towards the front of the body and shoulder blades drop towards each other. And then let's do that again. 
So the ball now is rolling along the inside front of the spine, and then it goes and hangs off the tip of your tailbone. So you wanna drop your tailbone down towards the earth and then come forward again. This is just you know my way of, of showing you how to move in a different way. When it comes to your shoulder blades, let your shoulder blades sink and you can even take your head and lengthen your neck forward. So what I'm not saying is lift your head back and push your chin forward. What I am saying is keep the back of your neck long and look forward and then go back and forth. Just a couple more times so we have a different relationship with gravity. And if you're tempted to keep to move from the outside, just kind of come back to I'm moving from the inside, I'm moving from the inside, I'm moving from the inside. That can be your mantra today. <laughs> moving from my awareness inside, that, you could say that that's your intuition. Okay, last one. And then come back into the center. Let's just do a little bit of freestyle movement. I'm gonna do circles like this. I wanna kind of free up the space between my rib cage and my pelvis a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of movement like this, like this, flexion, extension. I like the circles, I'm not going too far back. I wanna be mindful of what's, what my knees are doing. And being aware of where the ball is. You know, when I start to focus on a different part of the body moving, in this rib cage, I feel like this ball of light has moved up again. Somewhere around my, my belly button behind it. So I'm trying to imagine what it's doing as I'm moving like this. And then come back into the center and we'll walk hands back to feet. Tuck your toes under and give your soles of your feet a little stretch. Feel the light coming down and shining out through the soles of your feet. You know, we're in boots a lot lately, so we need to be kind to our toes and the fascia and the soles of the feet. This feels like too much, come forward a little bit. Notice where you're feeling, what you're feeling. Okay, then flip over, walk your hands back, climb up your legs, and up you come. Beautiful, nice, lightly snowing outside now. Okay, so come and stand. I'm going to say stand a little bit wider. We're going to move from the organs. So we've got this light now shining into our organs. Stand with, with your feet a little bit wider and a little bit of bend in your knees. So there's a softness and not so that you're, you're, you're shifting your pelvis forward. Just think knees bend, everything drops. Tailbone gets heavy. So just a little bit of a light, light bend in the knees. Take your uh, left hand and bring it to the right side. Oh, before I do that, I wanna show you with my friend here. So can you see? Um, I'm going to take his hat off because I use his hat to show you what the diaphragm looks like. Oh, of course, his head's going to come off and I'm not going to be able to get his hat off. Um, <laughs> oh, knocked his block off. Okay, he's just going to sleep for a moment. <laughs> so this is not exactly what the diaphragm looks like, but, but bear with me. It's kind of like this. So See how it, I have it lining along the front side of the ribs? It goes like this and it joins all the way around the back. And when we breathe, it moves down like this. That's a breath in. And when we breathe out, it goes back up. What sits above it, right up in here, are the lungs and the heart. All the other organs sit below it that kind of makes sense. I just wanted you to have a little bit of a visual of where the diaphragm is and what it does. It kind of has a central, it has a central tendon on top, not exactly like this or as colorful as this, but that's where the heart and the lungs join. So heart and lungs above, all the other organs below. Okay, so I just wanted you to have that, that sense 
but here's the organs that are below, kind of inside the diaphragm. So now, <laughs> left hand, so we're going to the right side of the body to find the liver. Right, left hand across the front of the, the ribs, kind of look, here's the bottom of my ribs. And then the other one's gonna go at the back. We've also got the right kidney back here. So little tender squeeze around your, your liver and your kidney. And what I'd like you to do is move it forward and back. So remember we got our legs, knees bent. So I'm using my hands to help move my kidney and my liver forward and back. Forward and back. Moving from the inside, the light right now is right in this side of the body. It's the strongest right here. And then come back into the center and move it side to side. Yeah, it's tempting to kind of go like this. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can move it. Hold on to that area firmly, but gently, and see if you can move that. We're also trying to free the ribs and, and a lot of the connective tissue around the rib cage as a result of moving the organs. Okay, now go in a circle, circle it around. If you can do this, you're well on your way to belly dancing. Notice how your oblique muscles and your core muscles are engaging. Okay, so now we're not done yet. Come back to the center. So now picture that diaphragm over top. So it's over top like this. And I'd like you to slide your diaphragm up and over the organs and then slide it up and back. So it's kind of like this. Imagine you can find your breath. I don't want to give you too much all at once. Diaphragm moves down when you inhale and up when you exhale. So you can move with that movement. Okay, so now let's do sideways. Sliding it now this way. Use your hands to help. Okay, and then come back into the middle. Let go and then just lift your arm up, notice once, notice the side you did compared to the side, the other side. I feel like I'm longer on this side. And I can rotate. I have better hip flexion, kind of balanced more on one side. It doesn't matter if you notice these things or not, if, you, if you're aware, just like put it into your awareness and let's see. Okay, so second side, what we have over here is the stomach, pancreas behind it, spleen, and your left um, kidney. Okay, so same idea. Let's get it to move forward and back. You can move your hands around. There's a lot of organs that you're playing with here. Sometimes we don't even think about where these ones sit in our bodies. And I'm, I'm simplifying it. I'm definitely simplifying it. I'll show you from the front. And then side to side. Think of stretching them. I'll think less of tipping because we'll do that rolling over the top and more moving them from side to side. Yeah, that's great. Okay, around in a circle. Keep 
keep breathing. <laughs> And let's do rolling up and over. So the diaphragm is now moving up and over and then sliding back. Like that diaphragm, that, that beautifully colored diaphragm in the body. I'll send a picture along when I send out the recording of the diaphragm and then go, over the side, so here we go, over. Think of the surfaces, uh, the like sliding, gliding and sliding. So the fascia that's uh, covering all of the organs and the bones and the muscle, the diaphragm is a muscle. Okay, and then back into the center. So now check to see what kind of freedom you have moving from the inside towards the outside. Can you balance? Twisting is a big one. I'm a really big fan of twisting, twisting in your thoracic spine. Because if you stop, you'll stop. <laughs> okay, one last thing, kidneys back here. Let's lift the kidneys up. So we flex the spine and lift the kidneys up and then gently draw them down. So imagine the light right between them. You don't have to know exactly where they are. And what you might feel is a stretch sensation in, in the out, outer body, but imagine that the, that the organs are getting this as well. So remember the rhythm, as you inhale, the diaphragm moves down. And as you exhale, diaphragm moves back up. Kidneys are gonna move too, because the diaphragm goes down and pushes the organs down. So kidneys are gonna move down on the inhale. So it might be a good idea to inhale this way and then exhale this way. I don't know, just try it out. And then come back into the middle and just wiggle everything around. <laughs> and let's do some sun salutations with those parts in mind. So from the, from the center of the body, from the organs. So come to the front of your mat. Blocks in front if you need them at whatever height you need them. I like to put the blocks off of the mat, but, but it's up to you. That way I get the whole mat for my body to be on. So come and stand in a way that still allows you to feel like the light is shining and giving all of your organs the space that they need to do what they do. You know, there's some very talented people that can tune into exactly what's happening in their organs. So give yourself a chance to grow that skill. Notice where your weight is in your feet. Shift according to where the light shines. We're so used to moving from the outside, forgetting about the inside, it's gonna take some time to get that, to understand what that means. So from the inside, start to breathe in or breathe out. You can choose and lift your arms up. The light is shining out through and then exhale or inhale and bend your knees and come forward into a forward bend. So I'm gonna do a little bit less on, about what's going on the outside for now. Find the light and lengthen it. Spread it forward through your spine, right out through the crown of your head. And then lift your kidneys back up again. Flex your spine. Feel that the light is coming towards your navel. And then do that a couple of times. Lengthen. Maybe the light comes up between your shoulder blades again. 
just imagine where it's moving around in your body as you're doing these actions. More extension of the spine and flexion of the spine. And then one more time, extension of the spine. Flexion of the spine, take your hands off your blocks if they're on there and then rise up to stand. Fill your whole body with that light. Let it shine out through your fingertips and toes. Back down again we go. So we have aware, an awareness of staying open and spacious inside. Flex your spine and then extend your spine. So your spine grows long when you extend it and flexing it rounds. Let your head even drop. And bring your hands to the floor and slide or step your right foot back. Bring your blocks back with you and bring your right knee to the floor. Pause here, knowing that maybe this is now focused down lower in your, in your pelvis. Are you squeezing this light in any way? Can you feel spacious in your pelvis here? Take your hands off the block. Find that light as a stabilizing factor and lift your arms up. And then bring your arms back down. Hands to the blocks, shift your front leg towards straight. It's a direction, not a destination. And then come forward again. And try to keep this moving a little bit more here. Yeah, there was a style of yoga that I was training in, you know, quite a number of years ago called Anasara. And what I, one of the things that I really love about it or loved about it was that they always asked us first before anything else to make the inner body bright. That was the, the phrase that was used. And it's a beautiful idea to connect with the inside first and then stay connected to the inside, stay connected to this, this idea of not compressing or compromising any, anything in, within you, but also mentally and emotionally. Okay, last time. Bring your arms down. Stay full, move your blocks forward, bring your hands to the floor. Step back into, I'm going to suggest either a full plank or a half plank with your knees down. This is a hard place to kind of work from the inside, but I'd like you to work from the inside and kind of do a little bit of a push and pull here, forward and back. And imagine the light sliding. Do you feel compromised in your low back? This might be a place where you'd feel compromised if your hips are sinking like this. We'll just do another couple. And then shift right back into downward dog, bending your knees, keeping your inner body bright and adjusting to what you need to stay in extension through your spine so that it's just like you were lying on the ground, full and expansive in the front, the sides and the back. Be aware of how your hands are landing on the ground, how your fingers, where your weight is. Imagine these tendrils of light touching the earth evenly. Whatever is touching the earth, everything's got an evenness to it. And one more breath here. Oops, did a little slide forward. And then look up. Step your right foot forward. If it only gets here, help it the rest of the way. Bring your blocks back in and bring your left knee down. And we go on this side. Notice where the fullness is in the body and, and use that to, to move it through the whole body. Imagine where your organs are that you were moving earlier how your diaphragm might be moving over top of them. This is a great place to kind of play with that. And you don't have to know exactly where they are. You might wanna do your own research. Where are they exactly in my body? Can I tell? Are you having an issue with any of your particular organs? 
Can you give them some love by just bringing your awareness to them? Okay. Last one. And as you come up, push off on your back foot, step forward, shift your blocks forward, extend your spine, flex your spine, extend your spine, flex your spine. So if you're legs are straight and your hands are on the ground, you're extending your spine here. You're flexing your spine here. Two more times. Lovely. Okay, come all the way up. without compromising anywhere, bring your arms down. Okay, we have a second side. We're gonna start differently though. Shift your weight to your right foot. Lift your left leg up off the ground. So you're like this. Lift it up a little bit higher. And for a moment, just lift the organs on the left side of your body up with your hip and then step back down and do the same on the other side. So step on your left, balance, lift. So find where it's level first and then notice what's happening. Lift your organs up. This is an intention to lift the organs up. You're using your hip, but I want you to focus on what's happening on the inside of the body. Okay, shift to the right again. Lift them up, they're heavy. So you lift these ones up, you let these ones belong. As a result, you're letting stuff happen to the outside of the body too. The muscles, they're all doing the work to move the bones. One more time each side. Level. Lift the rib cage on that side too. Okay, so stand on your right, lift your left, hike it up, level it out, and this time step back with your left, all the way back to wherever you can land, bring your blocks in. We're in a low lunge this time. Pause here, press back through your back heel, get some of your weight to shift so that you're not so heavy in the front that you can't pick your hands up, up, up off the blocks. I wanna be balanced a little bit more. I wanna bring that sense of awareness inside to my pelvis so that I can come to fingerprints and I can lift up. Take your arms out, lift them up. Let everything shine. Okay, bring them out to the sides, keeping the relationship of your arms to your body. So you're right along the front of the body and the back of the body. Start to rotate towards the right. Now just don't rotate the body, but think of rotating the, the organs on the left side forward around the spine and the organs on the right side, you're rotating them back around the spine. So move from the center rather than the outside and then come back. We'll do two more times on this side. So they're rotating around the central column of the spine and then they're coming back. One more time. Yeah, it makes a whole new ball game. There's no compression. Compression has happened. And there's no compression. <laughs> And then bring your hands down, come to your blocks. I'm going to move blocks forward and step back right into downward dog. Adjust your downward dog to feel that sense of fullness. From downward dog, shift forward into plank.
Hold and breathe and stay full. Let your kidneys be light. Kidneys want to sink in this pose, but lift your kidneys up towards the ceiling. Slowly bring your knees down to the ground right where they are. You can point your toes back or you can keep them tucked. Still keeping your kidneys lifting towards the ceiling, start to bend at your elbows and come about halfway. As you come about halfway, it doesn't even have to be, it can be a quarter. Keep space for your heart and lungs. That means keep breathing. So we're moving up and down. Kidneys are lifting, heart and lungs are still doing their thing. They're not compressed. Because we're so interesting. We are built to move and breathe and have all the organs function. Okay, so land your pelvis this time. Land your pelvis, you can move your blocks so they're not right in your face. Bring your hands on your, or, or your forehead on your hands. So at the beginning, we started on our backs, now we're on our bellies. Be aware of where the light is. It feels like there's a lot of compression in the front of the body. So can you expand your awareness from the inside to open up through the back of the body? Kidneys again. The back of the diaphragm gets to move here. So when you breathe in, remember, diaphragm goes down. When you breathe out, the diaphragm moves back up and we're only talking a half an inch maybe. So that means the, the, the lungs and the heart travel that distance too. How can you keep space for that to happen here? And notice as you're becoming aware of this, how you're turning your core on. At least that's what I'm experiencing. So it's less about gripping and racing and being in control and more about offering your body something else, space for the organs. So create some action in your legs so that the front of your legs, um, I'm gonna say the front of your foot, foot acts like an anchor, holding on to the earth. Knees might get a little bit lighter, but your, your thigh, thigh muscles are engaged. You might find you're engaged through your gluteus muscles a little bit on your buttocks. Keep breathing to allow your diaphragm to move, for there to be space for your kidneys to lift towards the ceiling. Lift your elbows away from the floor. Keep doing what you're doing, it's good. Now lift your hands and your head away from the floor. Stay nice and full. and then lower, and then let's lift all at the same time. So I'm gonna let you decide what breath. So the whole head and shoulder girdle is lifting, but we don't wanna compromise the kidneys or the other organs. Keep space for the kidneys to be full. On top of the kidneys are adrenals. And oh, adrenals are, they can get fatigued with stress and everybody's feeling some level of stress. When they get overworked, they're in trouble. So keep space for your adrenals too. Last one. And then rest for a moment. Rest and as you breathe in, let your back ribs open up. Let the diaphragm at the back have some movement.
And then bring your hands beside your chest. Peel your shoulders up away from the floor so they're level with each other, not dropping down, but lifting up. And then push into the floor, lift yourself up, back into a downward dog. Extension through the spine, space all the way around front and back and sides. Think of your body as a, your torso as a column, a container, because it is. We couldn't survive if those organs weren't working. We're really fortunate that they work, even though we don't think about them. Left foot forward. Bring your blocks back in. So the low lunge to the high lunge. How can you balance your body here with fullness from the inside, support it on the outside to lift your arms away? You know, it's quite possible that you get here and then you start arching your back. Well, these kidneys, they'll move in. Can you lift up and keep the kidneys working and open while you open up through your hip instead? Okay, so remember the line across the front of the body. We're turning the organs on this side around the spine this way and this one behind the spine. So turn your organs around your spine and then come back. And watch two more times. Yeah. When you get caught up in working from the outside, just remind yourself it's the inside. Notice the difference. And then when you finish that one, come back. We're going to push off on the back foot. We got to do the hip lifting, lift the organs up on this side. And then come back down and step. And let's notice for a moment. Ooh. So one more set of movements that I want to do. I think we have time. I want to try to get into all the planes of movement. So standing here, step your right leg back. Be on an angle here to start so that you've got a connection through your back foot all the way up through your leg and body and head. And everything on this side of the body has long, long space. All the organs on this side, almost like they're, it's a separate tube. So keep that front leg is bent and keep that feeling along the whole right side of the body, but start to turn your organs again, start to turn your pelvis. So the light inside the center of the pelvis is now turning towards the right. What's not turning is the front leg. So come back and check to see. When the front leg turns, it'll turn in and your hip will go out. So where the movement is happening is the pelvis, the ball in the pelvis turns, the organs start to turn, and then maybe your back leg can turn. So come out of it and go into it again. Front leg stays stable. The pelvis, I'm turning that light. Think of all the, um, the, your colon, bladder, uterus, if you have one, ovaries, if you have them. That all gets turned, space around them. And then you're turning, it's the same as we did before, turning the organs around the spine and then stop there. Land your foot wherever it lands and see, do you need to adjust anything? Check to see what happened. Did your knee turn inward? And if it did, turn your pelvis back to where you can support what that knee needs. Then slide down here. So I've got my knee and my sit bone in line going forward over the center of my foot. I'm gonna also shift my back foot back a little bit because now in this position, I've got a little more space. 
So remember the connection of this whole right side of the body. All these organs are long and then reach up through your top arm. You can go high or you can go in the same line as the rest of the body. Use your left elbow to help keep your leg, your front leg stable. Take one more moment here to rotate your pelvis towards the right. Rotate your organs around the spine. Yeah. And then rotate or lift slowly back up. Rotate your, your back leg, rotate your ribs, rotate your organs around. Bring your hands to your blocks, step forward. Side number one. We've got one more side to do. Okay, left leg goes back. So that's a bit of a challenge on its own, right? Just to step back without compromising. How slow, like do, it, do it a couple of times. How slow and in control can you do it? We can kind of go fast just to get it over with, or we can kind of go, can I be aware of the fullness within me? And then adjust later. I can wiggle my foot back later. Okay, so front leg. Be aware, so we, we lean forward to get that connection from the whole back leg to this whole left side. And I don't mean just the outside, I mean this whole side. From the center, from the spine over. So we've got stomach and pancreas and spleen and the left kidney on this side. So now let's kind of play with this. Let the pelvis turn. Imagine the light in the center of the pelvis, and now you're turning your, your internal organs here to, to, towards the left. It's very tempting to let this leg go, but only go to the degree it's able to. Then the movement is gonna come from the organs around the spine and turning of your back leg. So come in and out a few times to see, what am I, doing exactly? <laughs> Am I doing this? This is a bit of a default and I'll show you from the front. I think a lot of us do this because we want to be somewhere that we think we're supposed to be. So instead, I'm going to let this turn. When I hit the wall, I know, okay, I can't go any further. Something's stopping me. Then I can turn my rib cage and I can turn my back leg. Then, so if you've done that a few times, losing my toes, then we can slide down. Maybe give yourself a little more space, maybe not. I know I like to have a little more space, otherwise I'm kind of rounding through here and I'm, I'm compressing on the bottom side. I wanna keep all my organs open. I wanna focus on the left side but I want the right, right side to be spacious too. I wanna be aware of my kidney, particularly on the left side, because it can get really crunched if, I'm, if I have a tendency to backbend here. Oh, beautiful poses. Okay, slowly. Turn, come back up reach forward to your blocks, help and step forward. Let's go from spinal extension. So I'm using blocks, but if I, if I, if I was me, I, I can keep my legs straight and my spine in extension as I come to the ground. So you're gonna kind of play with what you need. Maybe your blocks are this height. There's no place you, you're supposed to be. It's just what are you feeling? What are you getting out of this? I wanna flex my spine, lift my kidneys up, but also keep the front of the spine long and the organs in front. Let them kind of rest upside down for a moment. Diaphragm has to work against gravity. So if you need to bend your knees a little bit more, Bend your knees a little bit more. 
it's one of the reasons why I do like to, to go into inversions that allow us to be there for you know more than 30 seconds. Sometimes I like to separate my feet a little bit more so I can bend my knees and get my pelvis to tip forward and then I can hang. So if you're, if you're able to do that, hold on to your opposite elbows. Go, go deep inside again to exactly what's, what you're doing with your organs. Where do you feel compression anywhere? Be curious to, to know how you feel throughout the day after doing a practice focusing from this perspective. So from here, you can, you can come back up or you can come back down because <laughs> we're moving towards resting. What time is it? Yeah. So I want to do one more rotation. I'm not sure if we did that last week, but we're doing it this week. So come down, lay on your back for a moment. Open up like a big starfish. And see if you can picture what's happening with your diaphragm. So I said, it sits on the inside of the rib cage. And when you breathe in, it goes down. It pushes onto the organs. And that's why my belly expands because the organs are displaced. So they get a little bit of a squeeze there. It feels like it should be the opposite because what's actually happening is to allow the diaphragm to move downward, my rib cage has to spread and lift up. So I'm connecting with the outer sensation more often than the inner sensation. Let's see if you can for a moment here, connect with that, that feeling of the diaphragm moving down more than connecting with the rib cage moving up. And then on the exhale, everything comes back to its place. Okay, now come back into a Shavasana position, a Supta Tadasana. Bend your right leg, lift it up. We won't hike the hip this time. We're gonna keep the pelvis level. Leg lifts up, but reach over with your left hand. So I wanna stay on my pelvis and then roll over onto your left side. As you roll over onto your left side, your knee comes down to the ground and you roll onto your left side with your knee down. If you've done first aid, it's almost like the recovery position. Your right hand comes up behind your head, supports the back of your head. Now roll back onto your hand. And here we are, voila, in a, in a rotation. Release it for a moment, coming back to your side and now do it from the perspective of your organs. Shift the organs of the left side of the body forward and around the spine and shift the organs from the right side of the body back and around the spine. Keep giving them space and stay here for a few breaths. Notice how the body wants to move as you breathe. It's a living, breathing thing. We don't have to hold things so rigidly. Trees don't stay rigid. If they did, they'd, they'd break really easily. One last breath here. Then the next time you inhale, feel how your body 
has this, this movement, this fluid movement to come back onto your side. Come back on your side, take your hand away from your, your head, then roll to your back. I like to straighten my top leg and then roll to my back. Then you can center yourself. Notice, you know, notice what you offered your, your organs. What you offered your whole body. So let's do the other side now. So left leg up, pelvis level. We're not doing the hip hike. Reach to the outside. You might, you could use a strap here too. And draw your leg across your body. So as you're doing it, move from the organs this time. Notice what's happening with your kidney. And you're rolling right over onto your side and dropping your knee down. Left hand up behind your head. Now you're rotating your organs back. The organs in, in the above, uh, sorry, in your rib cage. So the ones on the right side wrap forward and around. The ones on the left side wrap back. Your head's just going to follow. What about the transition between the organs above the diaphragm and below the diaphragm and below the center of the body into the pelvic area? You know, what's the relationship between all of them? You feel how your body is just doing this, this, this movement because it's breathing. Feel free to make subtle adjustments to allow for more space. Or to come back to the idea of the light inside. So on your next inhale, when your body starts to roll, your upper body starts to roll towards the right anyway, go with that. Take your hand away. You can straighten your left leg and everything rolls back. You're controlling the descent. And then C, set back up centered, feel as if you're symmetrical and see if there's anything else you need before we rest. You can hug your legs towards your chest. Or you can just get what you need, like socks can go back on. Sawyer's so waking up as we're all getting ready to rest. So as you get settled, consider what, what needs support right now. There are lots of natural remedies for all kinds of organ support. that you can buy, but there's also so many things you can focus on in your body to support. How are you gonna, what are you gonna focus on? What needs a little extra love? Can you bring your awareness to those places in your body and see what happens. You can even bring your hands to where you think the organs are that needs a little extra love. You know, there's a lot of organs I didn't mention.
seems petting him. So once you settle, take a breath in, open your mouth, baby sigh to exhale. And if there's not a specific place within you, you wanna focus on, focus on the light again, the brightening and the spreading. Follow the pace of your spirit. There's no rush and there's no hurry. When you're stressed or worried, there's a misalignment. Can you instead relax into your beingness and embrace who you are and where you are? Move with grace and everything you want will effortlessly gravitate towards you. Patience and perseverance are needed. Do more of what nourishes you and energizes you and look to what's happening on the inside to find where your happiness is, where your source of happiness is, instead of the outside. If you feel you wanna stay here longer, you can. You can rest longer, or you can start to wiggle parts of the body that want to move and stretch. And you can sit up if you want to, or you can stay where you are to finish the practice. Thank you for moving your organs with me today. Don't forget that little voice inside that's, that's guiding you, the one that, that you hear a split second before your mind has an opinion about it, will never take you to a bad place. <laughs> It'll always guide you to your greatest good. Thank you. Peace.